Hello, hello. Welcome. Super collage with Pink Girly. Oh my goodness, I went to heat up my coffee. I had two, I had almost three minutes left. Of course, the hubby's asking me questions. Hello, Kellyanne. And we've got Shannon in the house and Angie. Hello, hello. Oh my gosh, I was just getting ready to go heat my coffee. And the, the room that I am, it's our four season room. And it has a slider door to the outside. And all of a sudden, this big bang, here this bird flew into the door. I screamed. <sighs> Last year it happened and a bird killed itself. But there's, there's no dead bird out there. Whew. So, I'm very excited. I don't know why. You know, getting ready for my other streams on Thursday and Sundays just like seems like no big deal to me. But for some reason, Mondays, you know what they say, can't trust that day. I know you're singing it, Kel. You're singing it. Monday, Monday, can't trust that day. Anyway, I've got a general idea, of course, because I want to talk yarn and knitting and crocheting and i'm excited that my niece is going to join me now she got slammed at work so i estimate she will pop in somewhere between maybe quarter to like 6 45 6 30 6 45 ish there's calico kate hi cat hmm I reheated my coffee. It's so good. So, I really have no plan plan. Peggy, Peggy, there she is. Hi, Peg. Good evening. So, we're going to see just what happens. I was going to go grab, I think I have a couple other baskets over there that I was going to grab. Because I've been messing around with baskets, trying some different stuff. I was just thinking I want to make a, um, maybe like a rectangle one. See if I can figure out what I want to do without a pattern. So when some more uh, people get in here, some more gals, I'm thinking mostly will be gals. I'm going to see how many crocheters and knitters we might have in here. And how many know about some stuff. And then I've got some things to show you that I've done. My things are mostly not finished. I told Caitlin, hey, Sigid Pam. Good evening, good evening. I asked Kate to bring and show some things she's um, working on. Oh, okay, Ange. We might we might get you to get the bug. We might get you to get the bug. You might get the bug while you're recuperating, Ange, from your from your little surgery. But you're right-handed. You might be able to crochet me things. I don't know. We'll see. This one here I made out of um this is a real stretchy, this is a real stretchy fabric. I call the yarn, I call the yarn fabric. I probably shouldn't do that. All right, let me go see. I want to see if I can get that other basket I did. Let me see if it's in my box here. If not, oh well. Oh yeah. Okay. This is good. I do things sometimes I finish and I don't um, I don't pull my ends in. I should get in the habit of pulling my ends in, especially when you're doing like a ton of granny squares. I just not just I've been working on granny squares because I think I mentioned once before that I um kind of always like that granny square look with the bright colors in the center and the black on the outside. So when I started to look for a pattern, 
I saw one that was, um, I just went to my first one, Peggy, like maybe, um, oh, my little snowman. This is silly. This is my friend Holly, who passed on, who was um, a member of our art community, gave this to me for Christmas one year. See, he needs a light, and then he dances. So I named him Stewie, and then I named the little penguin Holly. So I always keep that on my desk. He's still dancing. <laughs> So I've always wanted to go to the Wool and Sheep Festival. My friend Kathy Adkins, who has popped into some, hey, Melody, have popped into some of my streams. She's my knitting friend who, oh gosh, I, I, okay, I knitted and crocheted, learned how to do it as a kid. My mom taught me and kind of stopped doing it for a while, raised my children. And then when I went back to work, Kathy Adkins, a gal that I went to church with, um, my husband and I were working for a Christian college at the, at the time. We went to an event at a nearby um, hotel chain. And Kathy Atkins was there. So we got chatting and she was looking for a job. She was looking for a secretarial position. And as it so happened, my department was looking for a secretary. Well, one thing led to another, and um, Kath was hired, and so she ended up being my secretary. So then she, she's always been an avid knitter, I think, most of her life. And so she would bring her knitting to lunch, and we'd sit and have lunch and stuff, and then she got me back into knitting. So then I was like a freak about knitting. Now, recently, I've been crocheting because Aunt Beck... And really kind of Shannon has gotten me, the art junkie who's here, you know, with all the stuff they've been doing, kind of got me back into some crocheting. And I just thought I'd like to try some baskets. And then one thing led to another. And then this is the rope basket that I did a couple of weeks ago. So it's rope, but I actually, you know, you crochet around the rope to hook it together. So I did that on a live but then I was, was seeing, you know, for years I was thinking about the black um, granny squares with the bright colors inside. But I was saying it before, I don't like that real thick um, peaches and cream cloth. Um, Shannon, you're a machine. <laughs> you have been going to town, girl. And um, so I found a, a pattern that I liked. See, 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 I don't pull. Well, see, with these, I don't know because I have to stitch them together. So I was thinking, well, maybe I can make a little throw for the end of my bed. And I, I found this Hobie. It's called Rainbow and it's cotton yarn. But it's, it's like a two ply. See, now I don't keep the plies and the information about the plies in my brain very well. DK weight, I think, and Caitlin might know this better. I, well, we could Google it. DK weight, I think, is like a four ply. If my friend Kathy comes in, she will definitely know. But this is a very soft, thin cotton. See, now those watch claws that everybody makes, I don't care for them because the cotton is too thick. I like I like um I like a thinner cloth. Um so I bought a bunch of this DK is a three ply. No, oh, I would have thought it was a four ply, but okay. So then I thought I would make maybe a throw, right? And then I saw a pattern somewhere where you stitch these together and you can make a big, a big tote bag. So now I'm going to plan B with my, but see, I just shoved, I don't even know what's in this bag. 
So Caitlin, I think, has, has ordered from Hobie and uses some Hobie. See, I'm a yarn snob. I'm a handbag snob and I'm a yarn snob. These might just be my plain ones. I guess I have my other ones. But see, you need like hundreds of them. So I have a bunch that are all different colors. And then I figured I would make a couple plain centers. So this is just one bag. I haven't been working on these lately. I'm easily distracted. I think they call it ADD. So I've been leaving the one long tail because then there's a way to stitch them all together. So that's part of what I've been doing. You still have to do stuff when I sit at night and watch TV with the hubs, right? So then I was messing around with just some fabric that I've had around for years. Now this one is another rope basket, but then I used um, a tan cotton. And then I have to, I, I don't know how to finish off that edge smoothie because it's somewhere, somewhere it's got to stop and start. But see that, that handle, I just did that on my own. That's not right. I'm sure that's not right. It looks kind of cool. I just looped the rope, put a couple of straight pins in there to hold it while I crocheted around the two ropes that overlapped and then came on down and then I took a piece uh, of the uh, cotton fiber afterwards and just stitched that down. That's not too bad, right? Something different. And then I was trying, see here's enough more, more tails, trying um, some beads. So I put some wooden beads in amongst this. Now, it just so happens, Peggy mentioned wool and sheep um, festivals. So I went to my first one, 2021, because I crashed. I crashed. Caitlin and her mom, my sister Nancy, were going to go to the wool and sheep, and I happened to find out about it. They weren't intentionally keeping it a secret, but... I found out and I said, well, is this a mother daughter thing? And they're like, no, you want to come? And I'm like, yeah, because I always, always wanted to go. And now I'm sure there's a lot of them. Peggy, are you talking about the one in New York? The one um, in um, Rhinebeck? It would have been better near the end at the handle. You know, I thought about that, but then I thought it would be too clunky there, too. So, see, I'm going to just add something to see. These aren't done. I'm going to add some things to these here baskets. So I'm going to add a little little jazz and matazz there. You probably could, Ange. Oh, you have one there in Maryland? Oh, cool. Yeah, I went to the one in Rhinebeck, New York, which really is only a couple hours from me. So we had a blast. We did a little damage there, of course. I got an amazing bag there. It's not a knitted bag or a crocheted bag. When I went years ago to a fiber festival type thing with my my friend Kathy Adkins um, we went to one in Connecticut and then we went to one in hey Candy good evening we went to one in um, Georgia Atlanta Georgia and we just had a blast and uh, we would shop and mill around the um, convention during the day and at night we'd go have a meal and then go back to our room and just knit like you know crazy women and look at the stuff we bought so when I was there I saw a bag that I really wanted to buy but it was quite expensive and I just didn't want to spend the money with the cost of the trip but yada yada you know it's very conscientious then this is several years ago now well 
more than several because it was when I was in Pennsylvania. So it was probably at least 12 to 15 years ago, right? Yeah, these are crochet candy. And um, so I didn't get it. It was more like a carpet bag from what I remembered. So I said to Caitlin, I call her Caitlin. I don't know. Sometimes we call her Katie, but most. We mostly call her Katie, I guess. I said to Caitlin and my sister, if I see a bag here when we were at Rhinebeck, I I'm going to get it. I don't care what it costs. I don't know when I'll be back. I never saw, hey, Mina, good evening. I've never seen a bag like that again. And I'm just going to get a bag. Well, I saw this bag. And of course, I had my own money, so I didn't feel so guilty about it. And my sister Nancy kept saying, are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? And I'm like, I think I'm going to do it. And so I purchased it. And then, of course, I had to carry it around the festival. I took my walker because it was very hilly there and I have lower back issues and so we could use the seat to pack things in and then I could put stuff on it and just like push it like a stroller or like a shopping cart. Well, I had this bag that I bought on it and it's um, got hair like an animal, like goat hair or something on it. I don't even know what it's made of. It's beautiful. So I stopped at one vendor booth. And this lady was admiring the bag. And I said, I just bought it. And she's like, you're kidding. Where? And I said, over there. It was across the, we were still in the same building. I said, it's over there. That guy on the end, the ladies, I guess they were second in from the end. I said, I got it over there. And she's like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. You're going to have to name it. <laughs> so I call it Henry. So I'll remember to take a picture and I will post the picture either in Fibs Diggity or I might do it both, you know, Instagram. I probably can put it on my community tab too. When you see this bag, oh my word. Okay. So Caitlin is working and she is expecting to get home around 630 Eastern and then she'll probably maybe, um, you know, have a little tinkle and she said she was going to have everything set up. So um, she might grab a little something to eat. So I expect her like maybe around 645. So I thought I would just, um, just start talking about knitting and crocheting and if anybody has any questions or if somebody wants to learn, I brought a great big crochet hook out here with me. If anybody wants to see me, I'm right-handed. can show you what I do. Um, I wanted to talk about maybe some knitting needles. These are my favorite brand, Addy Turbo Knitting Needles. And of course, when I first uh, learned how to knit and my mom taught me, it was with a regular pair of needles. And I'm assuming most of us know what they look like. I didn't grab a pair of those. I don't use those anymore. For many years with knitting, what I found uh, with the straight needles, because I really didn't know about these needles, these cable needles or circular needles, I guess you could call them. You will have to show it on here because I don't have Facebook or the others. Ange, it's so big. You, I, I wouldn't be able to show you under the camera. The bag's so big. But if you get if you get um, YouTube, I'll put it on my community tab. You can see it there, I think, honey. And um, one thing that I struggled with was was when I would knit a row and then have to turn my work I always was dropping the other needle so when I for me when I discovered the cable needles or the circular needles I was just like a hog in heaven because you drop it it doesn't go anywhere it stays it stays on the other end of the wire so I have not used a regular pair of knitting needles since these. Now, 
in my experience, um, I believe if I remember correctly, I learned to knit before I learned to crochet. And maybe that's why really I'm a knitter at heart. I prefer to knit. It is easier on my hands. I have some arthritis stuff, you know, going on down in, in here. And uh, my one primary doctor many years ago said, well, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm knitting all the time. And he's like, well, stop. And I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. And so, you know, I just deal with it. I did have some cortisone shots a couple of years ago. I think it's probably time for me to go again. But anyway, these do make it easier. Hi, Teresa. But I do remember the struggle with knitting is just getting comfortable holding the needles holding the needles and getting your tension. And if you desire to learn to knit and you work at that, just like anything else, practice, um, you'll get it. But I do think that the double pointed, I mean, not double pointed, double pointed needles are a single needle, and they have this kind of a point on both ends. And so say you're making a hat, say this is a hat and you're starting at the rim because some patterns, oh, hi, Mitt. Some patterns are you start at the bottom and go to the top. So as you come to the top and you're making, say you're making a little skull hat and you come to the top and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. If you're using cable needles or if you're using, you would have to be using um, double pointed needles to be able to knit in that circle it keeps getting smaller and smaller so a lot of times I guess the ladies would use the double pointed and you'd put like three or four stitches on each one and you'd be able to to knit from each one to knit around that circle and to make your you know your top join together and get smaller and smaller now of course the cable needles they come in all different sizes where I mean I've got a pair that I think they're only about that long and the cable's only about that big in between and then at one point my husband gave me the okay to purchase interlocking um, knitting needles and they're also the Addy Turbo whereby the cable disconnects and I've got several lengths of cable and then I think I've got size maybe four to 11 in knitting needles. And I think they have crochet needles the same way that interlock and, um, you know, you can make different sizes and stuff. So that was a thrill. That was a big purchase for me at the time. But like I said, that was many, many years ago. So um, at one point uh, I came home with some knitting books just from, uh, I think at the time it was A.C. Moore. And uh, my daughter had her own uh, place at that time. I've never tried Tunisian, Pam. It's, do they use um, cable crochet hook with uh, Tunisian? I've never tried the Tunisian. It's on my list of want to do's, but I haven't done it yet. I know Aunt Beck uh, has lots of videos um crochet videos that if anyone's interested i'm sure you can find something on her channel that would help you but um so my daughter had a couple roommates i think at the time it was just her one roommate christine her and christine so they came over to the house and they're looking through these crochet uh, knitting magazines that i got and they were more upscale ones and they're like, okay, I'll have this and I'll have that. And can you make us this? And can you make us that? And I said, you know what? You two need to learn to knit if you want to make all this stuff. They were putting post-it notes in my books of what they wanted me to make them. So I taught them both. I'm pretty sure <clears throat> Christina finished at least one poncho. I think I made them both each a poncho. If Colleen would remember um, better than I would, 
And Colleen has has knitted quite a few things, not since she's had kids, but when she first started to learn. And, um, you know, it, it was just so funny. While she was living at home doing that, she would sit and um, get on the couch, put her little hoodie up, and she'd sit there and she'd, she'd knit like crazy. So I guess it, I guess it happened before she got her own place, but... Anyway, um, she didn't seem interested in the uh, crocheting part. And the thing that I didn't like about crocheting for me is that your basic crocheting, your stitches are open. And when you knit, your knitting is dense. So before Caitlin arrives, because she's going to have some things to show you. So I'm going to show you my stuff. So these are some of the baskets that I've been working on. These are crocheted. And I have just been having fun putting my, you know how some of you probably saw Aunt Beck's video where she, she talked about, and she might have a video where she shows you what she did, but she took um, different yarns and rolled them all together. I think, I don't know if Scott got it for her, like a winder. So she was able to wind into little balls, you know, the length of um yarn that she wanted to use to make baskets and such and of course you know just um just knitting or crocheting a scarf i've taught um a gal by the name of betsy who used to live with us who was a student a college student and i taught betsy how to knit and her first scarf i think i shared this before was full of holes and um, I said, oh, honey, you can pull that out. We'll just start over. And she said, no, no, no. I want to remember that this is my my first scarf. But I think she has since made scarves for her sister-in-laws. And uh, it's really kind of cool. When Kathy Atkins and I were first planning to go to our first um, crochet convention, I mean, uh, uh, knitter, knitting fabric yarn convention in Connecticut, the folks we worked with, um, my bonus son being one of them, were really making fun of us going to this old lady thing, right? And we're like, there will be young women there, trust me. And Gary in particular would say, oh, yeah, okay, you know. And um, we almost stopped a couple of young gals and said, can we just take a picture of you as proof that young women <laughs> like to work with fiber and knit? There were plenty of young women there. But you know what? A little shawl is not too hard to make either. Now, this is a knitted one. I always seem to be attracted to fiber that is more of an ombre kind of look. So this is kind of like a sage green with some tan. And it's just a little garment, I guess you could say. It's not blocked. I haven't blocked it. Um, but you could also use it for like a scarf to tie around your neck, or then you could put it around your shoulders. I have two in this pattern. I must have really liked this pattern for whatever reason. But see, you can then, of course, you know, you could put a little pin or something there, or you could tie this. Hi, Joyce. Where it is a as a little scarf or, you know, underneath of a, a jacket or something. So I made that one. And this this fiber, this uh, yarn is kind of bumpy and twisted. Has a little bit of a sparkle to it. I don't know if you can see it. I must still have about six balls of this. I mean, good size balls. I was saying to Calico Kate the other day, I was... I was trying something with this yarn and it wasn't working out. And so I pulled it out. I'm fighting to get a knot out of it. And then I thought to myself, what, well, are you crazy? Just cut it and throw it. Just cut it and throw it out. He's still got like six balls of it. So that was one little project. Now this one, I want to find the other one. Oh, this one, actually, I think Kathy Atkins had given me this yarn as a gift. This is a real soft acrylic. And you can see the pattern a little better. But so you can see where in the knitting, uh, 
it's it's just more of a dense kind of a stitch. So this is the same pattern as the one I just showed you, but you know, you can see, I mean, it looks almost totally different than this. This one's not blocked either. I should block these. Now you'd have to be a little person to use this as a little shawl. But I just, I love making shawls. But see, like I said, you can also use this like a little scarf, a little, you know, a little something, something under a jacket or over top of a sweatshirt, you know, it would look cute. I've only made one pair of socks. My friend Kathy Atkins was on a sock kick there for a while and she was in a club where they, every month they were making a pair of socks. And this is another one. Now this is just a plain, I think this is just um, like a, uh, I don't think it's a garter stitch. Maybe it is a garter stitch. I don't know. It's been a long time ago that I made this. So this is a little larger, you can see. So this would be a nice little shawl. It's just a triangle, really, with some fringe on the bottom. Hi, Stacy. See, I got a long tail here. I still haven't pulled my tails in. This is a real soft fabric too, but then again, it's um, it's a light green and like a sage green. Somewhere I have a whole bucket of stuff. I might have give actually I might have given a lot of it to Goodwill because my husband was cleaning out the garage and he said, "Are you ever going to do anything with this stuff?" And I'm like, "Oh, you know, you put so much time into it." And then, um, you know, I just leave it set. Here's another one that was not, oh, I'm not sure how long that's going to last. Where it's another shawl. It's got like a lacy bottom, but it's got your plain. Now, this is a stock and knit because it's got the, um, you can see like the little Vs. And this is a lightweight. But the same thing, like a little shawl. And once you would, you know, block it, steam it, stretch it out, and it, you know, it kind of holds its shape better. Okay, honey, sounds like a good idea, Ange. Me for the South for Alabama folks. Yeah. So then when I was working, not working, when I was involved with the co-op where I had a lot of my art uh, to sell, that we had to work once a month, like a four hour shift. And I usually did more than that because I could. And I just, I love the people there and I love the shop. And so I would fill in when I can. So I usually worked at least once a week. And uh, there was a gal there by the name of uh, Maria. Maria. I just met a girl named Maria. Let's see if I can find it. I was going to look this up online before. Four, and I didn't. Let me just see if it'll come up quickly. She was, she had a booth. Let me just put this here, cover up that glare. Um, in the shop, and she did um, jewel. Well, she had two booths. She did jewelry, and then she did crocheted things. And one of her popular items, and she sold them online as well, was called a circular shawl circular Cro 
crochet so i don't know i saw i have i still have the directions and the paper somewhere which is really great um that's it i probably i'm not going to be able to find it but i i didn't keep it out and i tucked it away again and i don't know where i put it shucker so now somehow i got country crock butter okay i'm not going to spend a lot of time here if i oh my gosh i got the kardashians how did i get the kardashians i did spell circular right anyway that's how i got introduced to the hobie yarn and the Hobie yarns that we picked out had some sparkle to it and a lot of different colors. I'll have to find that and post that as well. Because you're not going to be able to really see this. Um, because it's so big. And I haven't finished. I have two of them started. I haven't finished. I'll show you the most finished one first. But you start in a circle. Now there's probably a right side and a wrong side. Whoa. See, so you start here in the circle and it just keeps going around. You've got, you've got these poofs. And then when as, it, as the shawl comes out, it gets more open and lacy. And it's got, now see like right here, this is where your head would go through. And this beautiful, big, colorful circle drapes down your back. I might try to find it when Caitlin comes on and she's showing you some stuff. So I had that started. I can easily get lost in a crochet pattern. And that's got a lot of rows to it. You just keep going around and around. And then I started this one. Who knows why I started another one before I finished the other one. It might have been that I got stuck and I had to wait to see Maria to get unstuck. But this one is a beautiful dark navy with kind of... Um, can you back your camera out a little? Uh, yeah, my camera is way up far, Teresa. I'll put it up further. Is that any better? And um, a navy and then a couple different colors of lavender and kind of a... Uh, not a real purpley lavender. Uh, but then it's got, can you see the sparkle in the navy? It's got a real cool sparkle. So I got to the place, see where, you know, your neck, your head goes through here. And the stripes down your back. And uh, gosh, I think it's only about half done. So... My husband's aunt and uncle, who are no longer with us, when they got married, they got a cedar chest. And um, many, many years ago, they asked if we would like to have the cedar chest. No, it's more of a, um, I'm trying, uh, more of an aubergine kind of a lavender. And um, so we said, oh, we'd be happy to have the chest because it was theirs. And um, it wasn't in pristine condition. It's got a big gouge in the top, but that's okay. But I have it filled with yarn. And then I've got another box of yarn in the closet. And then I've got three or four bags of yarn in the bedroom. I have no words. I can't explain it. 
and I've I've given yarn away. But I just thought if anybody had if this has got a little stretch to it. So I just watched some brought some pink out. There's no hope for Ange. Oh, Ange. Yeah, come on, Kel. Spend the weekend. So I've been digging through that. Now, I just found some variegated cotton that's on the thin side. I just had a great big ball of it this afternoon. I put it down into a yarn hoarder. I hoard everything. Um, but see, I also do things like I go on McCary, okay? Oh, good, Kellyanne. I got your little I got your little envelope today. I really haven't had a chance to dig into it. Thank you, thank you. That was so sweet. Peggy said, we all have the walk of shame with unfinished projects. Oh, isn't that true? Supplies, yes, supplies for future and the hopes and dreams. Absolutely. And um, see, then I go in places like McCary and you get like a big bundle of whatever for, you know, 20 bucks or something. So I got a whole big bag of this Hobie stuff that's just absolutely delicious. And I sh it's like a cake, you know, when you, if you listen to Aunt Beck's, uh, one of her um, recent, I don't know if it was a live or a video, and she talks about making those cakes, you know, where she, she does, she goes to the thrift shops or whatever, and she gets yarn, she only pays $2, and then she comes home, and she puts the colors together, and she winds them into like a little ball, a little cake kind of a thing. Well, this one Hobie one, I mean, it's black on the outside. I think there's some gray. And then as you get towards the center, it's a salmon color and then a lighter salmon color to almost like a, a white kind. It's gorgeous. I can't decide what I would want to make with it. And so the, the last one that I showed you, I ran out. I wasn't going to have enough to finish. I didn't have enough to finish. And I found, and they discontinued making the yarn. And I found somebody who lived near me that had it. And I, I went and got it. You know, so I just do crazy stuff. So I don't know. If, does anybody have any questions that I can answer right now? What I was thinking is when Caitlin comes in, because of course she's a young gal, she's in her early thirties and um, I have to have her tell us, I don't remember. I think she probably taught herself to crochet first and uh, she's left-handed. Her mom and I are right-handed. Now, my sisters did not learn to crochet or knit. They were not interested. Um, so I think Caitlin may have taught herself how to crochet. And I guess I, I just don't know what interest or how she, she came to be interested in knitting. But I know that we talked and I said I would show her and so I said I mentioned before that she sat in front of we faced each other and she watched me and she was getting it um but she just didn't feel it like in her spirit like she just wasn't comfortable with it and so she kept working at it and um, then I got a, a message like a text message or whatever I don't know if it's a text or a message or whatever whatever it was and she um she said I figured it out I got it it clicks in my brain I know what I need to do and since then she's been knitting like 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 Shannon our chunky has been crocheting Caitlin's been knitting I mean she but she's knitting sweaters. This kid's knitting sweaters. And they're absolutely beautiful. 
So I want her to tell us also when she comes the story of, of how she she does, I don't know if she does samples or she tries out patterns and stuff for um, at least one company, if not a couple companies. I'm not sure how all that came to be or how that worked, but I would be interested to, to know that story. So we'll see what she says. And... I just, half of my problem is I can't resist a deal, whether it's paper, whether it's yarn. Um, I guess they're my, I don't know. I really like, I really like to touch things. So, and I like fabric, but I like to mostly look at fabric. I don't so much like, I don't need to sew fabric like clothing or like Calico Kate, she and Aunt, Aunt, I keep calling her Aunt Beck, Becky, um, sh they sew things and they donate, you know, and they help people and they make dresses and aprons and different things. See, I, I don't have that desire, but I like fabric to rip it up and stick it in a book, you know, mm -hmm. you know. I know, right, Peggy? There's one near me in Mount Holly. It's about maybe 20 minutes away. And it's just like, it's like going into a candy store. You know, you can, for me, you can go in there and just walk around and, and not gain any weight, which is like really great. But I remember reading a story about Debbie McComer and you, some of you may know who she is. She's an author. She's also a knitter, and I think she has some knitting stuff in some of her books. Um, but she was approached by somebody, if I remember correctly, she was approached by a lady who wanted to do some knitting for a charity or something. And she, I don't know if it was a, a gal from her church or somehow she knew this lady, and this lady approached her. And, and said, you know, do you have any like leftover yarn from a project that you're not going to use or, you know, that I could use to stitch up some stuff to donate to whatever this cause was? Now, Debbie Comer, okay, she sells books. I mean, I'm sure she's, she's not, you know, I would think she's pretty flush, okay? She said, sure, I've got some. I'm sure I have something that, that I could uh, let you have to, to, to do what you want to do. So she went home and went into whatever, whether she has a room or wherever her stockpile of yarn was. And I can so relate to this. So she's looking through her yarn and she's saying, well, I really want to make that with that. And I really, you know, I don't know if I'm going to find that color again. And I... You know, I really, I have a pattern already for this yarn. So I, she went out and bought the woman yarn. Because this is what we do, right? It's just like when, when you purchase it or you get it, at least for me, and I don't think I'm alone, you have a plan for it. And so it's hard to part with it. And... It's a disease. Okay, so Kathy says, my sister owned it. No, she did not. Kathy said her sister owned a yarn shop, but the big box store makes it hard. Absolutely. And you know what? If you want to support those small businesses, you're going to pay a little more. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Hobby Lobby is um, cutting back on the yarn and paper department. They're increasing home decor. See, yeah, that's a shame. See, because that's probably the bulk of what they sell, right? And then Kathy says, Debbie McComer, McComer Blossom Shop books had knitting patterns at the end. Oh, did they? See, I'm not a reader. So I never really read a book. I don't think of hers. But I, I read an article in a magazine or something about her with that story 
So I thought if anybody wanted to see, um, now the whole big thing now is, well, it's probably, it's not new. It's that magic ring. See, when I learned to crochet, we did a slip knot. We just did a slip knot. Crochet junkie. <laughs> Art crochet junkie, art crochet junkie. So we just made a slip knot, see, and then you would just, um, if your directions said you would like maybe um, chain three, and then you would slip, you know, slip the ring, you know, slip that and make a ring. And then whatever your stitch was, if it was a um, half double, you know, you wrap your yarn, you go in the hole, you pull through the three stitches, and this is how you make your ring. Say if you were starting a doily or a hat or, you know, a basket, anything that had a round bottom. I have a round bottom. See, and this was how we started our ring. And then... Uh, you know, you do however many your pattern it would tell you. And then you would slip, you know, slip that together. So you make complete the circle. And you'd have that, you know, and it would, you'd start. And then you'd go back into those stitches to continue, right? Oh, Kelsa, she has a very round bottom. Or the other way that I learned to do it was you would, again, you would just do your slip stitch, a slip knot. And you would say maybe chain three or four. Okay, Stacy. Um, so one two three and this doesn't look like much because it's so this new this is so big i i have other hooks here i brought with me and then you go into the first um instead of slip stitching it you go into that first stitch like it might say something like the second uh chain from the hook and then you just start crocheting and then you crochet in that hole. So, right, and you go around and around. You put in however many stitches the pattern tells you. And then you usually come to a point where you have to slip it together. And again, it makes that ring. And then from there, you continue around to, to create whatever you're making. But when my niece started, she said, have you ever heard of the magic ring? Or it might say magic circle, magic ring, magic circle, something like that. I'm like, what? Well, I've watched, I don't know how many videos to do the magic circle or magic ring, whatever it's called. <clears throat> and I've watched at least five or six and they all do it different. And then I'm watching Aunt Beck the other day. Becky McCauley the other day and she did it different again from the rest of them so you have to kind of if you're interested to do the magic circle the magic ring you maybe it's knitting it's the magic ring and crocheting the magic circle I don't know does anybody know that And she said, why don't they do away with those artificial flowers that people don't buy? Oh, <laughs> Hobby Lobby. You know what? I think a lot of people do buy them, honey. That's why. I mean, I, every, I'm not in there a lot. Okay. The um, Hobby Lobby, fortunately. Um, is a little distance from me. So I, I only go every once in a while. And um, every time I'm in there, I see people picking up those flowers. I don't know. I don't I don't get it either, Ange. 
So the magic ring is where you don't have, you end up with the same kind of a circle thing, but you, it um, opens and closes uh, when you pull it. So you can pull it partially closed or all the way tight if you do it right. And the idea is, is you take your, now I don't know if I can do this correctly. You take your thread around two fingers. Some of them, some people do it around their, all of their fingers. Um, and then you, you're supposed to pinch it here and then bring this other and to make this X and you go underneath and you twist it. So I'm going to try it that way. But then the last girl that I saw do this made more sense to me. And I've been a little more successful. So, oh, there she is. Okay, ladies, here comes my niece, Katie. Hi, Kate, you're on stream. Ladies, Hi, everyone. This is my niece, Caitlin. Kate, I was telling them about our trip to Rhinebeck. And I showed them some things that I have done in the past. We've got about 21 ladies here. Your mom said she was going to pop in. And Aunt Jack said she was going to pop in. So I haven't seen okay. them yet. Now, I don't. are you able to see chat, Kate? Yes, I am. I, ha I uh, have it pulled up. Okay, cool. All right. So if you have any questions uh, for Caitlin or myself, if you put it in caps, that is that will help us pull it out. So, Kate, I guess the first thing um, I want to say is thanks for coming in. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm excited, and too. <laughs> I couldn't remember, honey. Did you teach yourself to crochet? My mother-in-law taught me how to crochet. Okay. Okay. So, her mom-in-law taught her how to crochet. Very good. All right. And I forgot to tell the girls that since then, Caitlin has taught her mom, my sister, who was not interested as a kid, and then... Nancy, Kate's mom, taught our youngest sister how to crochet. So now they're both crocheting and doing very well, I might say. <laughs> and then, Katie, what made you want to move on from crocheting to knitting? Well, I have actually the reason right here. Um, let me make you, let me see if I can figure out how to get you bigger than me. I know I did it earlier when we did our practice. There we go. Okay, so now you you guys can see what Kate's doing very, a lot better, I think. Okay. Ooh, that's pretty. So this is the Claudia Crop by Two of Wands. Um, and this is a crochet pattern. And this is my first crochet garment, my very first garment at all. And when I made it, I just absolutely fell in love with making garments compared to, because I just made blankets or hats. Right, the uh, scarves or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and scarves. And um, I just fell in love with making garments. I loved it just to see how it grew and how it actually came together mm -hmm. was just so fascinating to me. And when I started, there wasn't a ton of crochet garments mm -hmm. that I really saw. Um, I think now crochet has become really, really popular. Mm -hmm. um, and now I see that, more crochet garments. Is that a little jacket or is that a pullover or? that is This is a sweater. Oh, a sweater. Okay. Cool. You can see the sleeve. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. Oh, I didn't realize you made that. All right. That's cool. Tell me the name again of what that is, honey. Was it a certain company pattern or? No, it's just um, a, a girl. I think she's based in New York. She oh, writes okay. crochet and knit patterns. She's oh, okay. two of, her name is Two of Wands. Oh, um, she okay. makes very, yeah, she makes very um, beginner friendly knit and crochet patterns. A lot oh, of okay. garments, a lot of bags. Um, yeah, she. Oh, I, cool. I really recommend her for a first time or how to learn how to knit or crochet. Okay. Now there's Aunt Jack. She just popped in. Hi, Jack. Thanks for coming. Hello. So from there, you 
you wanted to then move into knitting? Yeah, I wanted to move into knitting because um, of making. I just garments. wanted. Yeah, I love making garments, and I wanted to try my hand at doing. Um, just just to see how that construction worked. Kate has a question. couple of fur babies. So yeah. the little feet you saw there. Was <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just came in and art junkie said your piece, your sweater you just showed is beautiful. Okay. Um, now I, I remember Kate, you and I sat across from uh, each other and you, you were doing pretty good. I felt, and I felt like you were getting the hang of it. But I said to the girls earlier, I just felt like you didn't feel like in your spirit, it was like really connecting. Yeah. And that you kind of worked on your own. So like, how did you work through that to where it kind of just the light went off? And because I said from then on, you have just been ripping it up. Well, the issue is that if anyone is a left-handed person, basically you are living in a right-handed world and a lot of stuff that I do is actually right-handed. Oh, okay. So I crochet right-handed. Oh, I didn't realize that. No, yes. Okay. I crochet okay. right-handed because I was taught crochet and I just copied what my mother-in-law did. And I just followed the steps that she did. And I just, did it right-handed, not really realizing that there was a difference between left-handed and right-handed. Okay. And the knitting just was not clicking for me until one day I was like, duh, I'm left-handed. Why don't I try to knit left-handed? And it, it just, it was magic. It just, it just worked. And <laughs> uh, okay. Now Peggy, who's in chat, um, she said she's left. Peggy, I didn't realize you were left-handed. Peggy's left-handed and she knits right-handed. Yeah, it's definitely, okay. there's things that I am taught. I, a lot of times I do it right-handed, but things that I pick up myself, like writing, eating, um, I do left-handed, but stuff okay. like using a mouse or throwing a ball, I do it right-handed because I just copy Okay. Yeah. See, I didn't yeah. know that about yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's definitely, you don't realize a lot of things are right-handed, like a lot of cooking utensils are right-handed. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. There's yes. one gal that she's not in here tonight, but one of our friends in our art community, her name is Lisa, Lisa Conway, and she has a channel called Lisa My Eclectic Life. And she's left-handed. And I just love watching her work because it just amazes me. And she does, um, I don't think, I think she knits a little bit. I don't think it's her comfort zone, but she spins wool and she does a lot of mixed media art. And even just, you've seen her using a pair of scissors or say like an X-Acto knife, cut, knife cutting out paper. And then she had invited another gal, Diane Fago, to come on with her. And the, both of them were saying exactly what you're saying. It's a right-handed world. And trying mm -hmm. to find your way. And, uh, you know, I think Diane said the first time she found out that there were left-handed scissors, she couldn't use them because yeah. she had to learn how to use right-handed. Now, these gals are much older than you. They're like, you know, gals more my age. So, you know, it's just a different world for them and for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they didn't really have, I remember there was always in school, there was like in the communal scissors, there was always one left-handed scissor, but it was broken and rusted. So <laughs> yeah. Not much help. <laughs> no. So now what are you working on there? So I have two um, works in progress. Okay. This is a cardigan <gasps> I'm working on. I just really split for the sleeves, just if you can see. Oh, okay. So I just started working on the body. Um, this is a test knit. Okay. Can you tell the girls, uh, I said to them, I know you do some knitting for uh, other people, like for companies or whatever. How did that all come about and, and what do you do for them? Well, basically, pretty much, oh, my cat is... Knocking my camera. Shocker. 
he's very curious of what's going on. Yeah. So a lot of um, people write their own patterns. It's not part of a company or anything. It's oh, just okay. a lot of girl, like just girls who, um, a lot of them have, they do on the side. A lot of people do it as a full-time job. A lot of them are, you know, moms who just want to make a little extra money on the side. So they'll write knitting patterns. Um, okay. Or they can do crochet patterns. It doesn't have to just be knit. Um, right. And you can, I usually find them on Instagram. You can, like, look up, um, like, hashtag test knitter call. Oh, okay. And you can find something that speaks to you, and you can apply. You basically, you can fill out uh, a Google form. And basically what you're doing is you are going to read their pattern. Um, just, and if you find any mistakes or you're like, well, your pattern says I'm supposed to only have 15 stitches, but I ended up with 22. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you try to, you work it out. Okay. And basically this is a volunteer, this is volunteer and you usually get the pattern for free, which is usually mm -hmm. a pattern, you know, can be anywhere from like four to, I've seen up to $12 for a pattern. Right, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and sometimes they'll give you some other patterns that they wrote as a thank you as well. Oh, um, nice, and, okay. And not all the time, but a lot of times these girls will have it so that you are a part of like an Instagram chat or a Slack group. That you can just talk to a bunch of people and just get to know them a little bit and talk about the pattern you're making and just share pictures. It's just, it's a really fun opportunity. If you don't know, like, oh, what should I knit next? Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. um, a great way to, like, test your skills, um, see how fast you can make it, because usually there, there's, like, a timeline. It's, oh, you know, okay. Th this one's a pretty short turnaround. This one is due on the May 12th. But because it's a lace pattern and it's pretty open, mm -hmm. um, it's, been fly it's been flying by. Well, I told the girls, you go a humming, so. Yeah. <laughs> And I was telling them, I guess, last week when I first mentioned it, you were going to come on with me, that you were going to Mom's to watch the, the ball game and told Hubby, make sure you take my <laughs> yeah, he, he knows. He's like, okay, which bag? Because you have this bag full of knitting and this box full of knitting. <laughs> we were just we were just talking about that. One of the girls in chat said she's going to come to my house and do her, her knit shopping. <laughs> I was saying I was a yarn a uh, snob and how we were I was buying stuff from Hobie and um, a couple of the girls were talking about a yarn shop because there's not many yarn shops or is there any yarn shops near where you are there's one oh is um, there what's it called I is can't... it in your Yardley or it's in Newtown oh okay because there used to be one in Yardley but um gosh I haven't I haven't been out that way in a long time I know that there's one in Doylestown, but I mean, those yarn shops, they carry some high end stuff. Yeah. Um, some really like $30 for a skein of yarn. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. So now is this um, one that you're working on? Uh, this is for you? Yes. Yeah. This, this will be for me. Okay, cool. Wanted a bright color for spring. Now, is that a, like a golden yellow? It's sometimes um, the camera or, you know, whatever you're streaming from is um, a little deceiving as far as colors. Yeah, this is actually more, um, I can see in the camera, it looks more yellow, but it's more like a bright tangerine. Oh, really? Oh, that sounds yes. yummy. This is um, Drops Yarn Brushed Alpaca. So it's very oh, fluffy. It's alpaca. really... Yeah, it's really light and fluffy. If um, a pattern calls for mohair, uh, this alpaca is a good substitute because a lot of people don't have the allergy to yeah. alpaca the way that they do mohair. Now, when we went to Rhinebeck, I know you were looking at, oh, hi, Sherry. Sherry just popped in. Um, you were looking at a lot of different yarns and you were putting some stuff together. I know you were looking for something for Nick and you were putting some yarns together. Kate, um, I found was very good at finding fibers that work together. Like she was saying mohair, like weren't you picking out some kind of mohair? Yeah, I, that I with... actually, I actually have my Rhinebeck uh, creation right here. <laughs> Woohoo. All right. 
Oh. Now this is the zipper sweater by Petite Knit. Oh, wow. Look at that, girls. Oh, that looks great. This is really nice. How was it? Now, did you put the... Now, was that one yarn or did you put a couple fibers together to create that? This is two yarns together. Two yarns this, together. Yeah, this is... It is CC Wool's Merino okay. in the Worsted. I think she's a dyer in upstate New York. Okay. And this is held together with mohair from Rowan. Okay. Yeah, you're getting a, a lot of beautifuls here. Cool. Um, was it hard to put that zipper in? It it's sewing is not my expertise. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would love to sew. I have a sewing machine. I just, you know, the, with the crafting community, like how many crafts can you do at once? Yeah, right. Um, well, you're talking. You're talking to the choir here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it. I did this. I ended up doing it by hand because I was frustrated with my machine. Oh, so you? I just, okay. I, I just did it by hand well, just it to make it great. easy. Yeah, and actually, this is a funny story. Um, I promised my dad that I would make him a sweater. I think it's coming on two years ago. Um, yeah. and he picked this pattern in his size. And I have made him, I think, one and a half sweaters. One was too small. One was too big. He still doesn't have his sweater. And in the meantime, I made one for myself, the same pattern. <laughs> and he well, still doesn't you know, have his like, sweater. Not for, God bless you, because once I failed at one, once and it was the wrong size, it would be, I would be hard pressed to be redoing it. You are a wonderful daughter. Your mama <laughs> just popped in. She said, hi, Kate. Hi, Lori. <laughs> um so you're on the third try for dad's sweater yes um and that's why it's very important to make a gauge swatch i don't know if people know what that is yeah um oh, it's they're annoying they're hate so doing annoying I, See, I never so really annoying. let it bother me because i have not made garments but yes if you're making a garment ladies you got to do the gauge gotta do the gauge or it's not gonna fit you no you have to do it and it's so annoying because i just i don't i feel like i'm gonna waste yarn even yeah. though i always have yarn left over i'm mm -hmm. afraid of wasting it um but you you gotta make the gauge swatch <laughs> well if you're making a gauge swatch i mean i'm sure you did that for your dad but you know there too you know you can't Dad's got to say the same size too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Us adults tend to go up and down sometimes in size. Say, so what, what is your most? What is your now? You got some yarn from I don't know Norway or somewhere, didn't you? And you you were made. I mean, Katie's made like a lot of sweaters and garments. She, yeah, I have all my sweaters. Here oh yeah, yeah. I let's made. see. We we love looking at stuff. Art Junkie says, I don't understand it. You don't understand the gauge? Oh, Shine. I can bring, I can, I have all my gauge swatches. I can grab some. Oh, she has all of her gauge swatches. She's asking if you could explain what it means to make a gauge. Okay, hold on, Shannon. We'll, we'll do that for you. Oh, okay, look at that so table. Basically, uh, what a gauge swatch is, it basically tells you, um, like, because the people who are writing the pattern, they might hold their needles really tightly, or they might hold their needles really loosely, or they're using a type of yarn that you can't use. Mm -hmm. So basically, this is a test. Um, at the beginning of the pattern, it will say, I need you to knit 15 stitches by 23 rows something like that mm -hmm. and in in that stitch you should have four inches by four inches and if you meet if you meet that if the amount of stitches that you just knit fit into that four inches by four inches 
then you can use the needle size that they suggested and the yarn that you can use. But let's say you have like this one, this swatch when I made, it was a little bit too big. When I measured it, it was a little bit too big. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going down instead of, I think it was a 4.5 needle that she called for. I ended up using a four to meet the, the gauge. Otherwise you'll either the sweater won't be able to like fit over your head or you'll be swimming in it. Swimming in it. So what she's yeah. saying is we all as individuals have our own um like I know I knit tight. Yeah. So I can always go to a, a larger needle because I, I know I can make that adjustment. But I see what you're saying there. You know, I never really thought about doing the gauge swatches and then keeping them i mean oh yeah they're I beautiful keep them. In, they're yeah. beautiful in, on, of themselves yeah i have i keep all my gauge swatches because um they make excellent coasters well i'm just sitting here thinking they mm -hmm. would make a beautiful throw at some point you could put them all together like like an app can yeah that's I what know, I, right, I love it Teresa? Teresa a lot of people do that swatches. A lot of people um, eventually, like, I guess, crochet them all together because they're about the same size. Yeah, right. Yeah, because usually, you know, like I said, I don't make garments, but the ones that I've looked at generally say four by four. Yeah. Or five by five swatch. And then you can, and I, I didn't really think about uh, switching out different yarns or people have an allergies to certain yarns yeah, yeah that maybe what a pattern calls for to not let that discourage you but um uh, Teresa is saying wouldn't they look great as a for a fabric journal absolutely yeah definitely see these two swatches I um I did this one right here and it was the one on the top and it was just like a little bit too big Mm -hmm. so um i did it again at a smaller needle and you can see it doesn't Absolutely. seem like a ton see i'd have ru i'd have ripped that baby out see I, <laughs> it's wonderful that you keep them i mean especially if i was off and it was you know too large but see i think it's man i could kick myself now shannon's saying i'm allergic to wool Will the new wool still be itchy? Um, I'm a little allergic to wool. Not as much as when I was younger. But I, you know, I don't really, they have that washable wool now. I'm just, I'm not sure, Shannon. Yeah, I they guess. have washable wool. And I mean, the acrylic that they make now is so soft. I would think you might be okay. But I'd say take a trip to a, a yarn shop or you know, someplace where you, where you can buy, well, so she's in Canada. So I don't know what it's like for you gals in Canada. Um, if you could have places where you can go in and, you know, touch it. That cable sweater is beautiful. Is that, is that for you too? Is that yours? Yes. I, if you're my husband, you'll know that it's all for me. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Michaels. Okay. Shannon goes to Michaels. Yeah, I just saw um, Joanne had some merino wool for. I've never seen merino wool at Joanne's before, oh. but they um, they started, had some merino wool there. Started carrying that. Mm, nice. Okay, so let's. Um, what else have you got there for us to see? Because I also want, um, if you would, to show the gals. You know, we can just sit and chat, and you can just do some knitting. And we can watch you. And we'll pretend like we're not watching you. Sherry said, acrylic is not itchy for me, but it's normally the dander that we react to. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that, that was that one swatch. Yeah. With the little crisscrossy things there. Oh, that's beautiful. This is the most recent thing I just finished. This is Ingrid Sweater by Petite Knit. This was so much fun, especially with um the faux cabling here oh my goodness kate that's gorgeous wow yeah. art junkie says that's stunning that's beautiful what does the bottom look like honey is it um tight or does it it's very loose um, oh, i actually cool. 
made this because I knew that if I made this, my husband would be jealous and he would want one too. But <laughs> I'm like, I'm not making a second one of these. So I kind of made it a little bit longer. Um, and this is very, an oversized sweater on me. It's supposed okay. to be um, positive ease, they say, when it's like kind of just a oversized okay. sweater. Um, so it's oversized on me, but it kind of just fits him tightly. Okay. So, yeah, it's a so, tool. Um, it's a share sweater. <laughs> yeah, it does. Like, Sherry <laughs> said it kind of reminds her of like a fisherman's knit. Oh, yeah. I of. love, yeah, I love, those are so, um, th those were very popular this past winter. Oh, like yeah? kind of the, with the cabling and all that. Now, what's in between the, so you've got like the um, ribbed and then yeah, down underneath the ribbed. Uh, what is that? Is, stitch? This is double moss. Oh, see, I hate the moss stitch. Is if oh, I yeah. have it right, is the moss is knit pearl, knit pearl, right? Yes. Oh my gosh, it's that knit makes pearl, crazy. knit pearl, and then the up, and then the um, wrong side is pearl, knit pearl. Well, it's opposite. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, Peggy is wondering, Kate, how you block your sweaters? Do you block them? I do. Uh, it's definitely um, just a way just to make your stitches sit really straight and neat, um, like double rib ribbing. If you've ever made double ribbing before, it kind of scrunches up together. Uh -huh. This way, it just knits, like it just lays. So Bye, Shannon. Um, have flat. a good night. Shannon's got to go to a meeting. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Um, so what I do is I fill up a sink or a tub with like warm water with a little bit of soap and you let the, um, sweater sit in there for about 10 to 15 minutes oh. and then you gently wring it out with a towel and then you lay it out. You can lay it out on another towel. You can people, you can do like a yoga mat, lay it out on a yoga mat or of course they have, um, specialized blocking mats mm -hmm. and you just kind of pin it out to like I always you know make sure that the collar is straight and okay. my sleeves if, if like the sleeve like will come up to here and I yeah. just want it to come down mm -hmm. um you you can stretch it because it really does it does grow especially mm -hmm. um like if you're doing a cotton that right. will grow significantly yeah but, you right. know yeah. wool and super um wool has good memory so it's will stretch but not too much um but the super wash the treated wool they that does stretch a lot oh, you do okay. need to be careful if you do the super wash so you have to say well well can i throw it in the washer and dryer but as, as you know pros and cons with the super wash okay how about that? I just, you know, I have sprayed things and dampened them and blocked them, but I never mm -hmm. um, thought about actually putting them in. Of course, I didn't do any research either. How about <laughs> that? Now, how long does it take for like a sweater like that? Several days then, I guess, to dry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I think this took like maybe three days to fully okay. dry. But now, when, when it comes. When it comes to wool, like you don't need if you wear it once, you don't need to wash it again. It it can go like months because wool like naturally right. um is wicking so that you you know, if you go out, it, it will keep you dry and you'll be safe. Yeah, like that it way. I guess for the, for the animals and stuff. Yeah, 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 exact exactly. So then you probably want to have, if you're going to get into something like this, you're going to want to have yourself a decent set of pins too, because you don't want it rusting. Yeah. I just, um, I just use sewing pins. They oh, do okay. have special blocking pins. Um, you can hear my dog go. <laughs> She's squeaking. She's have, she wants to say hello. <laughs> Okay, there's a lady. In, oh, we don't mind if she says hello. There's a lady in chat by the name of Nancy Miller. And she wants to know, is it a special soap that you use? Um, you yeah, I I soap? use, um, uh, it's called a wool wash. You can just get it on Amazon. 
Oh, okay. um, but if you don't have a special soap, just, you know, just any soap. Like will, a dish soap or something. Just, yeah, you're just yeah. putting a little bit of it in there. Yep, just a dollop. Not, not just nothing crazy. Tiny. Yeah, just to get it like a little bit well, soapy. Well, a daisy dollop, would that be, Kate? Or... Yes, yes. <laughs> a daisy dollop. <laughs> we have a thing in our family. The girls are, well, the cousin girls would sing that daisy dollop sign, song. I don't know how many times. Almost every holiday, especially if we had sour cream, we'd all get a rendition of the daisy dollop song. <laughs> okay what else you got you probably didn't Let's empty see. out your whole closet though can you believe no, that? I, see. I mean Let's it's see. just amazing this um, one two. oh my gosh what stitch is that this is what is this called sand stitch sand stitch Phew. this is Probably my favorite one um, because I think this looks the most store bought <laughs> out of all of them, I think. Oh my gosh. I don't think any of them look handmade. <laughs> but this is made out of alpaca. So okay. it is soft, soft, soft. Oh, I do. I do love alpaca. I, You know, Kate, that, that white stuff I gave you? Yes. I don't know. The guy said the guy said it was alpaca, but see that made me itch. But I've touched mm -hmm. other alpaca in the past and I didn't itch. So I don't know if that was like really alpaca or if it was a com or a blend. Yeah, it might have been a blend. Yeah, I don't know. I think I need to I don't know, girls. I think I might need to have me some alpaca. Definitely go to Rhinebeck again this year. I've been itching to go again. Yeah, I would like to go again, too. Peggy said Kate is a master knitter. <laughs> and uh, Calico Kate agrees. Sherry said this sweater here is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I was thinking about that. I don't know. For some reason, I'm thinking about that light green, that mint one. Oh, did you I get, can grab that. Did you I get that from, that was that yarn from Norway? You were waiting for it to come from somewhere foreign weren't you or do i have yeah. a different different yarn i'm thinking about no this um it's knitting from olive i think they're in oslo norway i love this yarn it is so soft oh there you go see this needs uh another this was i think maybe my i want to say this was my first knit so you can see like there's a drop uh -huh. stitch here here's another drop stitch this was either my i think this was my second thing that i've ever made so you can definitely see like my tension is not as mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. see so but, just like our drawing girls and our journals and stuff we can see our progression see kate's able yeah. to see her progression with her knitting peggy said kate should knit herself a cute dress have you ever ever oh, thought about a dress or something like I, that i definitely want to um but of course the ones that i've been looking at are like a lace weight summer silk dress that would take forever to make <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know you're so quick yeah that's a cute sweater too well right when you were getting ready to pop in we i was starting to talk about that magic ring in the magic circle mm. and i i thought do you have a ball of yarn there and um I know you said you haven't been crocheting much lately, but I guess you could, I guess, do they do it. that with knitting as well? Or I was thinking you crocheted left-handed. So I was wondering what that would look like for a left-handed person to be able to do that magic I think ring thing. Th yeah, there's two different magic loops. The one cr from magic crochet. Loop. I'm saying Ma circle yeah. or ring and it's loop. I think it's either or you can say, but um, 
what you talk about the magic loop in crochet is like starting a granny square or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But um, mm. a magic loop um, in knitting is if you're knitting in a very small circumference, um, you take like a large needle and kind of make it smaller. That's yeah. right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm so there are two completely different techniques, but the same thing. Okay. Name. Okay. Angie, go have a good rest, honey. Thanks for being here. Angie says, nice Bye. to meet you, Kate. Bye, Angie. That's right. That's right. When I, because you scoot on those cable needles when you're knitting, you scoot mm -hmm. all the stitches like to one end and you can pull that. That's what it is. Okay. So it's the magic ring for crocheting that. Okay. Well, I don't want to put you on the spot because I, I really, I didn't realize you didn't. Because one of the girls... Um, and I think she's here tonight, had mentioned when I first started talking about this, um, crocheting left hand, it was difficult. And uh, I don't know, Candy, what were you saying? You were saying something about it being backwards or I don't, and I think she was struggling. Well, I'm assuming it was her, could have been a friend. I don't, I don't want to speak for her. Um, but like I said, I thought you crocheted left-handed. Um, but anyway, I was getting ready to show the magic loop. Um, you probably can do it without even thinking about it. I have to watch let's, a video every time I, let's see if I can re even remember. I, do it. I, mean, I don't want to put you on the spot. Let me put, I'll put myself back up here and, um, yeah, they say wrap it around your two fingers. And then, now some of them crisscross it, and then you go underneath, you, you grab that thread underneath, pull it up and twist, and then I think you have to grab that same same thread then and pull it through, right? And make your circle, to make your stitch. But see, I think I get it wrong. I think I'm, I'm trying to, I'm doing like muscle memory. So I'm trying to. Yeah, my I'm, muscle, I'm, I'm yeah see, I don't think you pulled right. that same one. Because see, now that's not working for me. All right, let me try again. Okay, don't watch, guys. Go get a cup of tea till I figure it out. The new okay. way I learned to do it is better for me than. But see if I grab that first. Oh, I think I got it. Okay, watch Kate. Don't watch me. I usually I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it again. I was just doing muscle memory. I've been doing this in a long time. Yeah. See that's I don't know. The last gal I watched, she helped me out because what she did was she pinched her thread and brought it around and she just grabbed under there, but then she dropped everything, picked up her yarn that's attached to the ball, made her chain. And then told you, you know, work in that circle and see that that has worked every time for me. But when I make the cross and that not a cross, an X, and I go under and grab that, Sherry said it takes a bit of practice. It does, Sherry. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And then I have to keep reminding myself and go back and watch a video again because it doesn't stick in my skull. There's definitely like certain techniques that I have to watch a bunch of videos from a bunch of different people uh -huh. and just one of them will stick. Like my make one rights and make one lefts and knitting it. Mm -hmm. I just could not remember the difference I, and I could not I always, remember. Yeah. I always have to and look that up. I think it, it was a comment on YouTube that said, be right back. And left through the front door. Ah! So I remember pretty much be right back. So you go through the back to make one right. Yeah. And that was. That did it for you. I oh, see. But even still being doing it right handed. It's funny how we all different hold different. Uh, yeah, the I, differently. And. Yeah. I think which basically makes. I. 
really focus on how I wrap the yarn around the crochet hook. Yeah. Compared to like a lot of people, I see the way that they move their hook and they're really like animated with me because I think I, I'm left-handed. Yeah, you wrap it. I, I go get it. Like I pick yes. it and yes. you go, you wrap it. That's very interesting. And I think that's what helped me knitting because yeah, when, yeah. when I knit, I hold my yarn in my left hand. Yeah. So maybe if like the crochet, the left, if you kind of think more that you're controlling the yarn than the hook, maybe that would make crocheting left-handed easier. Yeah. Because I've tried to crochet left hand and it just doesn't work for me. And I think that's because I'm working with the yarn compared to the hook. Yeah. See, so anybody that's not from Oh, your mom says she does the X technique yeah. for the magic loop or the, ma or this is the ring. Is this one, is the loop, the, the knitting one? I think they're interchangeable. I oh, think people okay. can call them multiple things, but they all kind of mean the same thing. So when you do this, see, then you pull that little short tail you have. Yeah. See, and it pulls it all together and makes that little circle. So for right. anybody that doesn't know or hasn't done this before, see, that's how you start, say, like your basket. See, it gives you that, like that little belly button there that gives you that, that round circle thing. And what I'm going to try to do, I want to try to make a another basket. And I was uh, putting some cotton together in three I finally got smart, had this great big ball of cotton fiber, and I thought, you know what, I want to triple this so that I can make a basket, so I need it to be thicker and heavier. So I weighed it, and then I divided that by three, so that I knew how many ounces each ball has to be, <laughs> so I don't run out. So I have three threads. So that's what I'm going to do um, for my next basket I want to start. Um, and I just have kind of been winging it and, and doing my own pattern. Yeah, that's because, definitely I mean, fun. Once you do a couple. Now, Kate, can you... Um, can you knit a little something there? Yeah. I mean, I don't want you to ruin what you're doing or be distracted. You don't really have to talk, but, um, or if, if you could, if you remember anything that maybe worked for you in particular as, oh, um, actually I need to get a new ball because I'm out of a show off split splicing, which is my favorite. <laughs> now that's the other thing too. When you're you're putting a new um, ball of yarn on, do you? I just saw something where you cross it over and you loop it around, and then it it kind of slides together, and it's supposed to be almost like um, a, you don't see the knot. Do you know what's funny? I think that's called a magic knot. Yes, yes, Why you are right. Yes, that's what they did call it. Everything is like magic something, magic this, magic yeah, that. Yeah, magic. It's all magic. And, you know, it's worked out okay for me. But I used to just, you know, I used to just tie it and then try to bury, bury the knot. See, I love working with natural fibers uh -huh. because you can do what's called a spit splice. You know, I was wondering, like, I, I could not get that to work. And I was using, this is, um, this basket here that I did, I put some cotton with it, but the brown is a uh, wool that I got in um, that big building at Rhinebeck where I got like two, I think they were only like $6 for a big skein. And so this is some kind of wool. I wonder if it was um, super wash treated. I don't so basically know. what you do, it's not incredibly hygienic, but um, you put both, well, you can dip it in water, but you're yeah, right I was there. Just gonna say, if it's not <laughs> for you and you're selling it, you would dip it in water. But if it's for you, 
just a little bit of spit. Yeah, you just and, and then you just rub it together and it felts together. Right. That's what, you have no okay. and it's yeah. Yeah, that's what Teresa just said. Oh, you felt it together. How about that? See, I think I never I didn't think about rubbing it through like my palms. I think I was mm -hmm. using my fingers. Maybe I just didn't get enough friction going. Oh, how lovely not to have a knot. Yeah. That's because my very first project I ever did, I, you know, I was just learning. I think this is my my quote, my very first sweater I showed, that crochet sweater. I just uh -huh. tied them in a knot and just went on my way. And yeah, right. It's falling apart, to say the least. Well, and, now, and, now, and now we're connected to two new balls of yarn. And Joyce said she calls it the magic circle. Yeah, Joyce, we were saying, like, I wasn't sure <clears throat> if it's the magic. I've seen the magic ring, the magic circle. Kate said the, a loop, magic loop. But the one for knitting is definitely different than the one for knitting is uh, allows you to knit with your larger cable needles, a smaller piece, you know, like like circumference your hat or something if you're doing yeah. a beanie or something like that and um we're in crochet it's that starting point for many projects <clears throat> so do you remember what is what is different for you um knitting left-handed versus the right-handed so it's just you put your so it's like your lead needle is that left-handed needle for you? Yes. Okay. Now, do you have to adjust the pattern at all? See, that's where left-handed knitting becomes kind of a pain. Because you're essentially constructing the sweater the opposite way that it's written. Okay. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't because actually when you're making one left and making one right when you're doing it left-handed it comes out the opposite so when you make one left mm. it actually leans right and it's opposite so let's say you're making a pattern let me get um, a raglan sweater to kind of show what's a good raglan sweater So a raglan sweater is basically you're making um, left leaning and right. Actually, you kind of make it upside down. So I'll put it upside down. You're making left leaning and right leaning increases uh, oh, with oh, um, with just one stitch that is just a regu that, regular yeah. knit. Um, so as you're going. If you're going, if you're a right-handed knitter, you're coming from this direction. Right. And basically you go and you mm -hmm. make one right, you do your normal stitch, and then you make one left. Mm -hmm. And as you're reading the pattern of left-handed, you're coming from this way. And then you make one right, but it's going to lean to the left instead. Mm -hmm. Your regular stitch, and then you're going to make one <laughs> left, but it's going to lean to the right. So it ends up working out, even though when I first started, I was very confused why it was called make one left and make one right, because it was not leaning that way. So right. I was like, I don't, why is it called that? It's, mm. But then I'm like, oh, I guess it, it does opposite for whatever reason. Yeah. So a lot of the times it just works out for itself. But with my current pattern, I'm reading a chart. Oh, charts. That's a whole nother uh, one. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like, it's like code. It's like I'm, you know, <laughs> learning code. Co yeah. For the, you know, Pentagon or something. It's really <laughs> wacky looking, but normally people read because you're doing right. You're doing from right to left. Yes. But um, I do left to right, left okay. to right, which is the opposite. Okay. Wow. 
Yeah. Now, have you thought about writing your own pattern or have you? I've thought about it. Definitely. I would like to. I was but just going to say, are you interested in that or not really? Or I, I'm definitely interested, but it also comes kind of with apprehension because pretty much my Instagram is just all knitters. I really just do all knitting for my Instagram. Uh -huh. And I'm, I just would hate to like come up with an idea and like write a pattern and then just discover that it's already been written. Mm. You know, like I accidentally stole someone's idea. Mm. It's definitely, I think it's a lot of math, really. Yeah. Because well, that's the good thing about being an old gal like me. I wouldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> See, you remember a lot of your different stitches and stuff. I would think it would be very hard that you would write your own thing and, and just happen to, you know, have copied something. Yeah, an idea or something. Did. I mean, there's so many mm. wonderful pattern writers out there. Um, now, Ravel Ravelry is a really great Oh, that's what I wanted to resource. mention. Yes. yes. If any of you um, that are here this evening or those that might be watching the replay of this live, uh, Ravelry.com is a wonderful um, resource for knitters and crocheters. Um, tons of patterns. And I think um, I haven't been in there in a long time. Like I was in there the other day looking at patterns, but I'm not like, um, hey, Dawn. I don't know the ins and outs of all of it. Like I don't post things in there like my friend Kathy Atkins. I know she always posts stuff in there, but you can ask questions. You can research stuff. You can find information on different fibers. Um, at one time, I don't know if it's still that way. Like you could find people who say, say you're at the end of, like I, I mentioned earlier, I knew I was running out of that fiber and they don't make it anymore. And I was able to find it on the carry, but they used to have like a swap thing. Thing where you could contact yes you know you could put out like i need three yards of you know this whatever moon moon over miami yarn or whatever and you know if somebody has it you know they're willing to trade with you or you can pay them a couple of bucks to get to get what you need to finish your project um but even just to look around at different patterns and stuff and uh, just how it sounds, Ravelry, R-A-V-E-L-R-Y dot com. And it's free, right, Kate? It's still free. They yeah. haven't ever charged me. And yes. you just sign up, get your own account, and uh, you can meet other knitters and hookers in there. You can, meet, you can meet hookers in there, girls. Yeah, it's really great. And you can really, um, like, let's say that you want to knit a cardigan, but you have a bulky weight yarn but you know you want it to place work bulky weight cardigan and you can type and you can filter all of those specific things and you'll find right, right, right. exactly and you can filter like free so it'll right. be a free pattern um yeah it's real it's a really great resource and one of the gals that um follows me and she's she's been in some of our lives and I know she watches some of our videos and stuff Terry 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 Cleveland and uh, she was saying um gosh now it just went out of my head what the heck was I she was just saying oh she just posted in Fibsiggity one of those little um I think they're knitted they could be crocheted. Those little animals. Mary talks about them. That starts with Amagurumi. Amagurumi. Yeah. Um, you know, you can find different patterns and stuff in um, Ravelry and these those little animals and stuff. You know, you can get different ideas and see things that people have done. You know, if, if you like to, even just going and looking around, it's kind of fun. And you can, do if that. you, let's say you have like one skein of yarn and you have no idea what to do with it. 
there you, you can go. type in, you know, um, I have a DK weight yarn, uh, this many yards, and you can find a pattern and maybe it'll be like a hat or like a booty for a baby or something like that. Just so you can use up that because I have plenty of those one skeins of yarn. Yeah, one skein have... project or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Dawn, you're a lefty t also, huh? Caitlin is a South Pole. Yes, <laughs> she is. Although she said earlier she's um, adjusted and has really taught herself right-handed for a lot of things. And she taught herself to knit left-handed because it finally dawned on her that, hey, let me try this left-handed because that's what I'm comfortable with. But it's really funny, her mom, um, she writes right-handed, but really pretty much does everything else left-handed. She eats left-handed, she mixes left-handed, you know, when she cooks yeah. stuff. I mean, she's, and I don't remember anybody pushing her to be uh, right-handed. Now, our grandmother uh, was left-handed. But in those days, it would, that was a no-no, and they broke her of that habit. And so they made her be right-handed. And I think she probably did the same thing, you know, did mostly everything left-handed except wrote. Yeah. Dawn says she uses both hands sometimes, but mainly her left hand. Now, Dawn, I forget. I know now we were, we've been talking on um, my channel and other channels as well, Kate, tatting. And I'm trying to learn to tat and, um, you know, there's just certain things that some, you'll see somebody do, like you were saying earlier, and for you, it will connect like, you know, the lean in the right and the left, you know, that little mm -hmm. ditty that you say that, that helps you remember that. Um, just trying to, to maneuver those things and work with the different fibers and stuff. I just find all that that really fun um but i don't know i i just i don't know why i like all of it so much but i'm certainly not an expert at any of it um but those little stitches or even that the little tiny crocheted stuff oh yeah um teresa said yes they thought if you were left-handed that you were demon possessed yeah right yeah <laughs> Dawn, I still have to get, oh, I've just been so crazy busy with some stuff. I haven't, um, uh, Dawn and I, I want to see if Dawn will show me some tatting stuff. But, um, so does anybody else, does anybody have any other questions uh, for Kate? She, did you have time to eat anything, honey? She just, she got home from work and I think just hopped right on um, the stream here for me. Well, I made eggplant parm last night, so I think I'm going to do leftovers of that. Do a little leftovers. Yeah. So I'm not going to hold you a whole lot longer. So if nobody has any other questions, we can go ahead and maybe wrap this up. Yeah, I needle tat. That's what I'm doing, Dawn, because that, that shuttle, uh, I still want to look at that, but I, that's kind of daunting to me. Jeannie Anderson. Hello, Jeannie. Shuttle or needle tatting, both are fun. Oh, they sure look fun. I mean, when you see those gals do that shuttle tatting, whoo, they fly. I just even just love watching people do any sort of crap, like spinning. Yeah, yeah. uh-huh. Uh, I love watching people spin. Like, I'm not going to go out and buy, you know... <laughs> Well, at um, least um, not um, now, but maybe. Not now. Maybe. Even just watching people machine knit. I don't know if you've ever seen people machine knit. No, I haven't. Uh, that is so much fun. It's, you know, some people think that it's cheating or something because you're not yeah, doing it by yeah. hand. But I mean, if you see the way that these people work this machine, it's not, it's not easy at all. Um, and huh. it's really, uh, it's really amazing. There's this girl that I follow on Instagram. Um, she basically, people who dye yarn will send her, her yarn and she'll machine knit socks just to see how their hand dyed yarn kind of shows up she oh, does it really okay. quickly. And the way that she works this machine, it's incredible. 
Um, but those machines, I think they cost a couple thousand dollars. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's so much fun to just I, I, any, I, any craft. I love I to really thought about that because if you yeah. know, like I got Charlotte, one of those small little weaving kits. Yeah. I've done anything for that with, for Christmas, because the one gal I was mentioning earlier, Lisa, she, um, spins and does her own. Um, you know, she likes to spin and she has the cards where she combs the wall and, and um, things like that. And she there for a while, she was weaving, you know, and some of those machines, you know, they can, they can cost a pretty mm -hmm. chunk too, but I wonder, I'm going to have to look up a knitting machine. Nancy, Nancy, are you still here? Jackie, are you, Jackie, you probably won't remember because you were younger. Nancy, do you remember, um, didn't Aunt Pearl work in a company that had those knitting machines? Is that what she did? I'm trying to remember. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Teresa, Lisa, some, she's dyed her own yarns, too. My mom, actually, for Christmas, got me a book that um, you can, like, forage for like just natural like berries or plants that you can do natural dyeing which oh, I definitely, yeah. Uh, oh yeah that would be cool yeah i want to try that oh yeah that would be really cool yeah i didn't think about that well i was saying yeah nancy you remember did aunt pearl work for a company where uh, they did the machine knitting for some reason, I'm thinking that she did. Isn't that why she met Wendy or something? I don't know. I could be off base. Yes, her and Johnny. Okay, my cousin John. Okay, so I am remembering. Yeah, I never really thought about watching how that machine works. Huh. I'll have to check that out. All right. All right. Well, there's plenty of... Uh, resources and things that we can uh, watch on the internet for sure. I never even thought about that. So what's next on your plate as far as knitting projects? What do you got lined up in the queue there, Kate? So you got to get that done by, what would you say, the middle of May? Yeah, what, middle of May, then? and this this is flying by. Um, I have another cardigan I'm working on that I paused. I can show Okay. cardigan. I always have like three going on. <laughs> yeah, at always, once. Yeah. Let's see. Hey, Teresa just got a notification that sunset is coming. All right, seven thirty. Well, that's not that. I think Teresa's central. That's six thirty her time. Now this is um that rust sweater I showed earlier. This is the cardigan version of that that sand stitch yeah i've got yarn oh, everywhere okay. i'm working on the sleeve right now mm -hmm. a little hard to show yeah it's beautiful but this yarn this oh um, that's pretty this is cashmere oh my and basically, um, not very often do I go to the casino, but if I do and I win a little bit of money, you know I'm going to buy some yarn with it. <laughs> <laughs> that is so far into us here in this room tonight. <laughs> not um, Say the name of that stitch again, Kate. Sand. Sand like S's S's and Samuel. Yeah, S A N D. How about that? I never heard of that stitch. Hmm, that's beautiful. Yeah, this is essentially um, just now. Is this for you, or is this another um, another pattern try that you're doing? Um, this is for me. This oh, okay. is um, one of my favorite designers. She's called the Knit Pearl Girl. Okay. She's a really great designer for people who are beginning. She writes her patterns extremely clear, like she's has her doctorate in 
knitting writing. It's, oh, really? How about yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, they're really Sherry. And she um, writes her pattern with compound raglans. So mm -hmm. if you are someone with a big bust and find that patterns don't really fit you that well, she mm -hmm. writes her patterns so that, you know, just because you have a big bust doesn't mean you have, you know, arms. Because a lot of times if you are... Right, right. Like, it doesn't match with your bust versus, like, your arm size. So she writes... Basically, you measure yourself and you kind of find that perfect medium so that you, you get a really nice fit. How about that? Yes. Teresa says, thank you, Kate. You do beautiful work. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, unless anybody has any other questions, I think I'm going to just let us go. Let Kate get some dinner. Thank you, honey, for coming on. Oh, this yeah. This was so much fun. Very interesting. And uh, gosh, you really do do beautiful work. And I really think you should have your own channel. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. So I'm definitely thinking out. about it. My, my husband, uh, Nick is always telling me he wants, you know, me to make a YouTube channel so I can become YouTube famous. And There you uh, go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're right there with you. All right, ladies. So we're going to say thank you for joining us this evening. And uh, if you have any other questions, you can always leave me a comment. I can ask Kate if that means that we can get back to you. I appreciate you being here with us on a Monday evening. And um, like always, don't forget, take time to be creative and enjoy the journey. And I'll see you next time. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.